Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of ESO Elsewhere. So in the last episode, Ozithus arrived in Northern Elsewhere and was summoned by Abner Tharn, who asked that we help them with the dragon problem, naturally enough. We also learned that not only were the Khajiit dealing with the dragons, they were also trying to liberate their towns from Euraxia. So we've been helping with that as well. We were sent to investigate some surges of power. We eventually found Cadwell, who agreed to help us eventually. And then we went back to one of the Khajiiti outposts to meet back with Darn, where there had been not only a necromancer undead horde attack, but also a dragon attacked. So now Darn has asked that we go investigate where he believes the source of the undead army is located. And that's what we're going to be doing today. All right, so let's go ahead and head out. Looks like we have a little ways to go. Man, I asked you guys in the last episode if y'all wanted me to do side quests along the way or not. Won't know until, uh, you know, I actually upload the first episode since I am going to be recording a bunch of these at once. So it might be like five episodes in before I get an answer, but let me know. I don't know which would be the best way to go. I feel like being on the other road would be a little bit better. Yeah, let's see if we can cross. This quest we actually did do, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it and I'll just do it on my own time. But let's continue on with the main storyline for now. Oh no. <laughs> I thought this road would be a little bit easier to get to, but um... It doesn't seem to be the case. Can I gracefully fall? Probably not. We can try though. Ouch. Did I hear a dragon or was that just the wind? There is a dragon down there, but... Oh god. I think I'm stuck. <laughs> that was a smart move. Oh god! Let's just heal back up. You didn't see anything, Camel. We're fine. I healed. <laughs> Hopefully this is the better road to be on. There's a world boss right there, if that counts, but I don't really want to deal with that currently. Man, sucks that it's nighttime now. I knew it was going to be, but still. I guess if we're investigating an undead army, it's at least aesthetically fitting. The Stitches Way Shrine. Weird name. Alright, we're getting close. Looks like it is above us a bit, but I think we came at it from the right side. Oh, here's Kamira. We were told to look out for her. Guess she was heading to the I same did not spot. Expect to see you in this desolate place, Walker. Did Captain Nalado send you? Or have you come to join us as we hunt the dragon that killed so many of our warriors? Neither. Abnerthorn sent me to find the source of the undead that attacked the outpost. Then our missions coincide. We can work together to destroy the undead and slay the dragon. It will be glorious. When we finish with the hunting and the slaying, we can report our success to Lord Garesh Ri. Abnerthorn said you should return to Riverhold. I do not take orders from that old <gasps> battle oh, no. mage. Besides, the blood of Khajiiti warriors cries for vengeance. To disregard that cry, that is not a shame I can bear. No, I must do this. I must strike back and show my people that hope survives. Powerful words, but it sounds risky. The worthy life is full of risk, Walker. I assumed you knew that, given what you do. I will tell you a secret, though. Before my parents died, they gave me a pendant. As long as I wear it, Jode watches over me and provides his protection. You have a pendant that's connected to Jode? To Jode, yes. But also to my family and heritage. I suppose you could call it an heirloom. It helps me in my role as agent for Lord Garesh Ri, And that is all I will say about it. Now... Let us go inside and find the necromancer and the dragon. All right then. Sounds simple. Yeah. Oz is very excited. With me, stay close. We will hunt these necromancers down and end this dragon. All right. At least we have some help this time. The path splits here. We will go right. Walker, you stay left. Moons guide us. Never mind. <laughs> Looks like I'm alone again. Thanks. I'm sad. <laughs> but it's fine. It's not like I'm not used to it. Watch me just find the dragon on my own or something and have to fight it. Not that- I don't think the dragon would be in here, but... She acted like it was over here somewhere. <laughs> do know that it would fit. Oh, hi. Cut them down. Oh, well, they're up there. 
Hello. Uh, I wish I had friends. That's kind of spooky. I'm just going to go around. <laughs> oh, the freaking shadows. They did great with that. Making it look terrifying. Suppose I probably should kill these guys, you know? They are necromancers after all. I say as I've been playing as a necromancer lately, but you know. At least one of them is uh, a little bit more villainous. Yes, the lighting in this place. Very good, very good. Real dramatic. Okay, they're up there again. I'm still alone. Oh, hi! You know, we could have at least, uh, split the forces or something, you know? That would have been nice. Now I gotta deal with that thing all on my own. Gross. Ew. I don't know why I'm taking this. It's really gross. It's probably not pork. But, you know, gotta work on my provisioning. Oh, and there's more. Beautiful. Didn't like that explosion. Just gonna keep going though. Looks like we're almost there. Our enemy awaits five claw. Destroy the necromancer! Okay, at least they're here too, so that's not as bad. Hi. No more excuses. No more delays. Double your output or your reanimated body will march at the head of your Axia's forces. Lovely. What a lovely guy. Must be great to work for. Yeah, it's doing a whole lot to me, ain't it? At least my friends are somewhat helping me, I guess. I, I mean, it looks like to me that uh, your bones at least are. You kind of suck. And look at that big shield. I got so much shield now. So much shield. I feel like I could have phrased that better, but it's fine. Okay, there we go then. Far uh, enough, little insects. Oh no. You dare challenge Mulamnir? Uh, hi. Oh, yep. Oh no, bits that way. So oh, rip. Okay, yeah, follow the dragon. Follow the dragon. Looks like Kamira at least got out of the way. I think. <laughs> Talk to the dragon. Little morsel. It is she. Mulamnir would talk to you. Okay. Um. Can I take a picture of you first? You look pretty cool. Gotta say. Alright. We can talk. Please don't eat me. Mulamnir wanted to thank you, little morsel. Your actions help set us free of our hated prison. Now. Listen to the words I say. You decimated the Khajiiti Defense Force, and now you expect me to talk to you. Mulamnir wants you to understand the challenge before you. Our puppet, Eurexia, commands a legion of soldiers, an army of necromancers, and a horde of undead. Add my dragon brothers, and the hopelessness of your cause becomes obvious. So you expect us to surrender? You and Abnathorn set us free. You released us from the halls of Colossus. For that, I offer you this one last chance to survive. If you and the battle mage leave elsewhere, my brothers and I will not hunt you down. And if we refuse to leave? Then you will die. But not before we slaughter your friends and set fire to elsewhere. Once we reduce this land to so much ash, only then will I tear you apart. Threatening. So promises Mulamnir whose claws have dealt a thousand deaths. Oz is not a coward. <laughs> the next death I deal is going to be yours. Leave elsewhere, little morsel. Tell the battle mage, if I see you again, you will die. Pleasant. Oh, hi. Claw, are you all right? I heard what the dragon said. Perhaps my confidence was a bit misplaced, that creature was much bigger than it appeared when it flew over the camp. 
Kamira, what happened after you leaped off the cliff? I never jump without first knowing where my feet will land. Also, I have very sharp claws. We lost so many today. The dragon, that Mula Mir, it has much to answer for. It wants Abner Thorn and me to leave elsewhere. We defeated the Necromancer and shut down one of their undead foundries. We need you and Tarn, despite my dislike of the man. But what the dragon intimated about Euraxia, it called her its puppet. Yeah. Mm, I fear the dragons control the Rimen throne now. I need to get to Riverhold and inform Garishri and Abner Tharn. Yes, you must do that. I will join you after... After I take care of the remains of my soldiers. They died bravely and deserve to receive the proper sacraments. Go to Riverhold. I will see you there. Right then. Oh god. That was a bit <laughs> steeper than I thought. Oh man. I just I just keep doing it. I can't see. I'm just trying to get to the road. Alright, let's take the way shrine back. Oh! I can well, ah, he had not loaded in. Spare a moment for a chit chat? Hmm? Playing hacky sack with a pumpkin. Alright then. If we've had this conversation already, then I wanted to thank you for the useful advice. But if I haven't seen you since our talk at that mysterious gravestone, which seems much more likely, then I could really use your help. I just got back, Codwell. Tell me what's wrong. Did I mention the dreams? Visions, really? They come and go without warning, like seeing through someone else's eyes. Quite disconcerting in an interesting sort of way. Anyway, my trusty shovel and I, we searched that entire grave, and it was gone. Gone? What was gone? The Petraeus head. The dreams, the uh, visions. They drew me there, but someone got to it before I did. I have the strangest sensation in the pit of my tummy. It could be the cobweb porridge I had for breakfast, or something bad is about to happen. You think the betrayer's head has something to do with the dragons? Well, that's sort of like leaping from the cliffs of failure without a rope, or at least without tying the end off first. I can't tell you how many times I've made that mistake. Oh, Abner wants to see you. He's in the town hall with the cat's general. I'll go find him. All right, then. <laughs> At this point, we need to come up with a plan that takes into account Euraxians, necromancers, and dragons. I proposed a few options, but Goreshri wasn't sold on any of them. Tell me, what of Chimera and the source of the undead? Chimera and I killed the necromancers in the mountain, but Euraxia has an army of them. You paint a troubling picture, my friend. Still, we need to celebrate every victory we achieve. I fear such triumphs will be few and far between. Do you have anything else to report? I spoke to the dragon Malamnir. He said that Euraxia was their puppet. He told us to leave elsewhere. My half-sister likes to think that she's in charge. She won't take kindly to being called a puppet. As for leaving elsewhere, I think not. Obviously this Malamnir fears us. Otherwise the dragon wouldn't have deigned to talk to you. Have you spoken to Cadwell? He's worried about that disturbed grave where you sent me to meet him. Every conversation I have with Cadwell makes my head throb, but one mystery at a time, if you please. Mm. Now, if only I could get my half-sister to listen to reason and see that the dragons are using her. Why not try that? Let's go talk to your half-sister and Rimen. A parley? I may not like her, but we are family. Besides, it would give the Khajiit time to regroup. You're beginning to think like a thorn. Here, take this. Garish Ree gave it to me, but I refuse to accept payment for my services. All right, then. A parley with Euraxia is a capital idea. I'll send word to Rimen to expect us. I imagine my half-sister will treat us as befits my station and agree to the meeting. Attend to any other matters if you must, then see me when you're ready to leave. We should come up with a plan for negotiating with Euraxia. It just so happens I already have one. It involves distracting my half-sister with wit, charm, and words she barely comprehends. Oh, and you. Euraxia never could resist a pretty face. You'll pretend to be my bodyguard and personal valet. Oz is flattered. 
You want me to be your valet? Consider it obfuscation to hide your true purpose. We don't want to give Euraxia a reason to react poorly to overtures of reconciliation. Not that I expect to reach an accord, but still. Meet me in Rimmon and we'll enter the palace together. All right, I'll meet you there. Go on, go on. I'm capable of traveling to Rimmon on my own. Yeah, you can just we'll use a portal. We'll meet up at the city gates and go to the palace from there. I'm relatively certain Euraxia will honor the parley, but be prepared for anything. She's still a tharn, after all. Very well. Oh, looks like we can speak with them first, though. This one hates the idea of talking to the Usurper Queen. We should be stabbing her in the neck. Still... Nalado sees the necessity, even if she doesn't like it. Euraxia will almost certainly betray you, so be careful when you face her, yes? How did Euraxia become Queen of Rimen? By marching into elsewhere with a mercenary army and slaughtering our rightful Kajiti rulers. Not only did the usurper slay our king and queen, she murdered the rest of the royal family. Her crimes, they Lovely swarm lady. around her like flesh flies on dung. All right, goodbye. Let's talk to you about it. A parley with the usurper queen. I doubt she'll agree to any sort of diplomatic solution. But it will buy us time to replenish our resources. Very well. Take Tharn and meet with Euraxia. In the meantime, we will rebuild what remains of the militia. This question does not feel right to ask. I think I know why she's called the Usurper Queen. I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to talk to him about it. I think we got it. All right, let's head back to Rimen. We will once again just take the way shrine cuz why not? All right, there's Thorn. I expected sorrow and despair, but the situation here goes beyond even my prophetic inklings. Are you sure? Rimen looks peaceful to me. On the surface, yes. But peace through tyranny provides false harmony. Euraxia uses fear and threats of violence to keep the Khajiit in line, making them second-class citizens in their own province. It appalls me to think Euraxia and I are related. Fear and threats of violence? What do you mean exactly? It would be better if I showed you. Follow me and I'll demonstrate the true depths of my half-sister's villainy. Her grip on Rimen is far tighter than it appears. All right. Show me how Euraxia keeps the Khajiit in line. Very well. But what I'm about to show you isn't for the faint of heart. Follow me. Right then. Have you ever visited a Rimen workhouse? They treat the Khajiit workers worse than slaves. Wonderful. It's that building over there. For most of Rimen's Khajiit, it's the only job available to them. We're just going to stare at it now? <laughs> Do I talk to you? The workhouse serves ah. to snare the poor and the destitute, those who fall behind on their debts. They come here to find employment and earn a decent wage, but the costs deducted to pay for room and board leave them worse off than they were before. The workhouse accepts only Khajiiti workers? One of the first things Euraxia did after declaring herself queen was to institute tariffs and fines that apply only to Khajiiti citizens. So messed up. No one up. else needs the workhouse. A cruel tactic, but effective. There's nothing the Khajiit can do? The Rimen Khajiit? No. Any complaints incur fines for causing a public disturbance or some other inane ordinance. No one wants to risk falling even further into debt. It's ingenious. Monstrous, but ingenious. Sounds like slavery. Oh, Euraxia is clever. She pays the Khajiiti, and the workhouse isn't technically a prison. On the surface, it appears to be a place that helps society's unfortunates, but underneath, it's slavery without any of the uncomfortable trappings. Now, let's visit the Rimen marketplace. Take a look around. Business seems to be thriving, but appearances can be deceiving. What do you mean? It may be hard to see, but the Khajiiti merchants struggle to keep their stalls open while the less bestial business people rake in the profits. Euraxia would have you believe it's a matter of work ethic, but we know better. I hate her already. You're saying the Khajiiti merchants are treated unfairly? Unfairly doesn't begin to cover it. Khajiiti merchants must deal with high tariffs, extra inspection fees, costly licenses. Euraxia's squeezing them for every piece of gold imaginable. She even instituted a fur tax. 
fur tax. On the surface, it seems reasonable to make Khajiiti pay for extra inspections to ensure their fur isn't getting into the products they sell. And while they do shed, it's just another way to discriminate against the rightful citizens of this land. Yeah, let's move on. Come along. I want to show you the improvements Euraxia made to the palace walls. Wonderful. Okay. It's pretty up here, that's for sure, but... Uh. See the trebuchets? Notice how they're aimed into the city below. Lovely. See how the siege weapons sit upon the walls? When it comes right down to it, you're looking at the secret of my half-sister's success. What do you mean, her success? How else do you think Euraxia maintains order and keeps the elsewhere defense force at bay? She declared publicly and has repeated often that any attempt to liberate Rimen will see her unleash the full fury of the siege weapons upon the city. Euraxia would destroy the city? If Euraxia can't have Rimen, then neither can anyone else. She'd destroy the city in a heartbeat if she thought she was in danger of losing control. Of course, she tells her non-bestial subjects that only the Khajiiti districts are targeted. Can they really target the weapons that precisely? Absolutely not. But the lie makes her supporters feel better. The Khajiit know that even a peaceful protest could result in the destruction of Rimen. So far, no one has dared to challenge Euraxia's will in this matter, and for good reason. I think it's time we went and had a talk with her. Yeah. When we yeah, get to the is. palace, let me do the talking. As the Elder Tharn, I'll demonstrate my dominance over Euraxia and negotiate a cessation of hostilities. Okay. Well, it's pretty in here. Um... Ah, here come Queen Euraxia's guests now. I don't like the looks of these meddlers. I say we feed them to the dragons and be done with it. Uh huh. So you're Abner Tharn's bodyguard and valet. Not what I expected. I assume you want to follow your master into the Queen's inner sanctum, huh? I'll allow it. But first, I want to gauge the measure of your marrow. You're one of Euraxia's necromancers. I am Queen Euraxia's chief necromancer. You may call me Zumog Foom. The other grave callers answer to me. And this is my familiar and confidant, Sir Cadwell the Betrayer. Um, is that Cadwell's head? Ah, yes. The Betrayer saw you when it looked through the soul shriven's eyes. The creature you know is a pale shadow of the dark knight that once walked these lands. Uh, I exhumed huh. his remains and reanimated him. Well his head. It was all I could find. Why did you dig up Cadwell's head? My actions don't concern you. No, I'm concerned. I just wanted to <laughs> meet Abner Tharn's lackey and determine if Queen Euraxia had anything to fear. The answer is quite clear. Your insignificance rivals that of the soul-shriven fool, which makes you eminently forgettable. Right then. Okay, just... Now, about the rest of my body, oh pestilent one. Your insults won't hasten the process, betrayer. But there's a terrible draft in what used to be my nether regions. Uh-huh, I'm just gonna go in through here then. Don't mind me. What the heck? Ooh, look at this place. Okay, I'm here. Presenting Abner Tharn, Grand Chancellor and Overlord of Nibine, Imperial Battle Mage of the Elder Council, and Patriarch of the Tharn Dynasty, and his bodyguard. Ah, half-brother, your arrival, it's so... unexceptional. Pretending to be a queen... Hush, <laughs> Abner, you bore me. Bodyguard, you look interesting. Come talk to me. You heard her. What? Good luck. How about you were doing all the talking? I just gotta do everything here, don't I? What do you want? My sources indicated that my half-brother's associate was somewhat... taller. Oh well. 
Now, why in the world should I even consider negotiating with members of the losing side? We came to warn you. The dragons consider you a puppet, and they plan to betray you. A warning? How thoughtful. You do know that I defeated the Khajiiti army and took control of the Rimen throne? I am no one's puppet, I assure you. But why do you suppose I have anything to do with dragons? Let's see, I can persuade or intimidate. I like the intimidate. Abner's right. You are naive enough to think you can control a rage of dragons. They'll destroy you. Bold words for a common valet. I hoped my half-brother would provide an amusement, but this is so much better. Let me tell you what happens next. I lock you in my dungeons and do the most interesting things to your body until you die painfully. Let's see, persuade or intimidate this time? Hmm. You're no fool, Eurax. I don't want to call her Queen Eurexia. No, I'm intimidating her. I don't like this disgusting little woman. We expected you to break your word, but I'll break more than that. You really are just a usurper. You dare threaten me? Insult me? I will see you drawn and quartered for your insolence. Mulamir and I have an understanding. The dragons will secure my hold over elsewhere, and there's nothing you or my pathetic half-brother can do to stop them. Think about it. You're doing exactly what Mulam Mulamir help wants you to do. Enough! Zumog fool. what news do you bring? The Desert Wind Adaptorium has fallen. We move against Riverhold on your word. Then the word is given. Now, half -brother. Defend yourself, I see. Treachery? How could I ever have anticipated this? Yeah, Gods, right? Take them to the dungeons. No, yeah, that's not I happening. I think not. Oh, okay, goodbye. Where are we going, Thorn? Where are you taking me? Uh, hi. You okay there? Well... I suppose that could have gone better. Where are we and how did we get here? I assume you did some sort of portally thing, but uh, yeah, where are we? I prepared for Euraxia's probable betrayal. Unfortunately, my teleport spell wasn't quite able to penetrate the palace wards. Ah. So we wound up down here, in the palace sewer. Did you hear what Euraxia said to Zumog Foom? We heard two things of note. First, Euraxian forces have invaded the Desert Wind Adeptorium for some insidious purpose. And second, my vile half-sister ordered an attack on Riverhold. We need to warn Garish Ree. One thing at a time, my companion. One thing at a time. I need to recover my strength after teleporting us into this skeever hole. I'll need your help to get out of here. Then we can deal with both Desert Wind and Riverhold. All right, stay close. All right. Looks like we have quite a ways to go. But luckily I at least have a map of the place. <laughs> oh, hello. There are some knights down here. How pleasant. Is that Spellblade always here? I don't think he was. I'm pretty sure I pulled this knight from his spot. Okay, goodbye. That was intense. Alright, looks like the way out, right here. Finally. I can't abide another moment in this stench. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, let's have a word with you. Well, that's an experience I won't be adding to my memoirs. We'll separate here. Make it harder for Euraxia's lackeys to follow us. They failed. The parley was a disaster. Now, now. Things actually turned out better than I expected. We know that Euraxia wants something from the Desert Wind Adeptorium, and we know she's about to launch a counter-strike against Riverhold. There's no way I can be in two places at the same time. That's not exactly true. If my power wasn't depleted... Well, let's not digress. I'll go to Riverhold and warn Garish Ree. We'll make sure the city is ready for the attack. Meanwhile, you find out what's happening at the Desert Wind Adeptorium. What is the Desert Wind Adeptorium and where do I find it? Adeptoriums serve the same function as monasteries in other parts of Tamriel. Oh. Desert Wind and its adepts follow the order of Jean Kaj. It's west of here, on the northern lip of the Scar. Look for a side entrance if the main door is blocked. Alright, I'll go there. 
But I do think that's where I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.